When a couple stumbled upon an old house tucked away in the rural farming village of Ames in the Mohawk Valley, they felt an immediate connection. Envisioning a restoration project for the early 20th century home, they decided to begin with the small, peculiar mudroom, a cramped 70 square foot space that appeared to have been haphazardly added to the house. But as they began pulling up the decaying skirting boards, they unwittingly unlocked a web of long buried secrets. Little did they know, what they would uncover would reveal the home's dark and twisted history, something they could never have imagined. Nick Drummond and his partner Patrick Backer bought their new home in 2019. They were inexplicably drawn to the area of rural Montgomery County that honed wide open fields and pastures as far as the eye could see. Passing by the occasional silo or barn, they drove deep into the farmland and spotted the silhouette of an American Foursquare house. Perched on a hill in the middle of nowhere, they loved the aura of the old house. But they would only realize later that, hidden inside, was an unsettling gift. The couple's first year in the house passed without a problem. Although the house was aged, it was sturdy and Nick Drummond was particularly excited to begin restorations. He felt like all of his years of experience and interest in historical architecture made him more than qualified to tackle the charming house. The neighbors had given the couple an earful when they moved in, but he didn't really believe the urban legend surrounding the house. In fact, the mystery of the house and the man who had built it had only added more intrigue for Nick. The stories about this house just made the whole thing better, he explained to the authorities. There were rumors. We thought it was all fake, he stammered staring at the warped and rotten skirting boards that were scattered on the lawn. It all began one fateful day in September when Nick escorted a team of contractors into the mudroom. As they were busy inside, he decided to work outside the room. Trying to get to the underside of the room to install insulation, he began to remove the skirting boards and the foundation on the northwest corner of the building. When he began to pry off the slats one by one, he noticed that someone had already insulated the room. That's strange, he whispered. Insulation wasn't something that was used back in those days. Nick reached underneath the floor and his fingers hit the bottom of the solid wall. It made no sense either. This room is a porch, so there's no reason to have walls under the floors, he murmured to himself. Intrigued and confused, Nick quickly ripped more of the slats away. Suddenly, a bulky packet dropped right out of the wall onto the floor. Nick inspected the material that he thought was insulation inside the wall and noticed the edge of another package. Then another, and another. He began to sweat. The thing is, it wasn't just one or two packages. The entire hollow wall of the mood room was filled entirely with these strange packages. Nick turned towards the room and yelled for the contractors to come out to help him. What had he uncovered? We pulled the rest of the boards off and realized the whole side of the mood room was filled with these packages. The workers wanted to open them, but I wanted to leave them as they were because they are historic. Nick's partner, Patrick, arrived just as Nick was carefully pulling the packages out one by one and lining them up on the ground. Patrick's jaw dropped to the floor. What could the packages contain? Nick and Patrick carried the packages inside and stacked them neatly on the dining room table. But when they carefully inspected the first one, they were shocked by what they saw. What was poking through the brown and tattered paper around the strange packages could be proof that all the rumors about the house were true. For the unwitting couple, it was starting to get a little too real for comfort. It turned out that the house was built in 1915 by an enigmatic real estate dealer known around the Mohawk Valley as Count Adolf Humpfner, dubbed by locals and newspapers as the mystery man of the Mohawk Valley. It was rumored that he was an unsavory character who possibly had ties to the Mafia. You see, the house was built before the Roaring Twenties, and what Nick had just stumbled on was just a fraction of the man's hidden cache of criminal secrets. Now, Nick and Patrick had an idea of what they were dealing with, but when they delved deeper into the house's history, what they discovered left them feeling queasy. Count Adolf Humpfner went under several aliases. He had fled his Bavarian family home and settled in Ames, and his first wife had gone missing in 1912. Now that the rumors about the house were confirmed, what other ghosts of its former occupants still stalked the old mudroom? Indeed, even Adolf Humpfner's demise seemed shrouded in mystery. The executor of his large estate, Harry Berry, was the only witness. The Count had left behind over $140,000 on his passing in 1932, an enormous sum back then, as well as the deeds to the local school gymnasium, a bank, houses in New York City and New Jersey, and foreign bank accounts in various names. But where he had made this money was another story. So what had Nick and Patrick found? The strange bundles that were hidden in the mood room were, in fact, bottles of bootleg whiskey. Humpfner had hidden them in the walls during a time when the sale and production of alcohol was illegal, and they'd remained hidden there ever since. Humpfner's businesses and even his truck had secret hiding places that were revealed upon his passing. So what else had he hidden in the home in Ames? Nick and Patrick had just uncovered the first signs of the criminal dealings that went on in their home, but that wasn't enough to put Nick off. Soon enough, curiosity got the better of him. A few days went by, and I thought, what else is in that mud room? Nick said in an interview. He immediately thought about the crawlspace hatch they'd seen. The previous owner had told them that the hatch led to an abandoned well. But then I said, oh my God, 
Now we have to crawl into that hole. Nick recalls. It turned out that the hatchway led down to a couple of compartments that were built beneath the building. But what were they hiding? Nick descended into the dark underside of the house to find out. In the first compartment, there was a rug that was placed to cover an old well. The well was lined with stone and had been dug out by hand. Some eight feet down into the well lay water. The first compartment in the creepy crawl space did contain a handful of empty bottles, but the couple couldn't find any more of the smuggler's stash. They crept down into the second hidey hole. The first thing that was weird was, we didn't see any floor joists, Nick explains. Then we noticed a solid ceiling made up of a bunch of boards, and all the boards were attached with flathead screws. But why would someone do that? Instead of joists to support the floor above, Nick could see solid wooden slabs. The flathead screws were obviously used so that the boards could be removed easily. There would never have been a ceiling in a crawl space. That was never an insulated room, so that made no sense either, Nick explained. So I thought, there's something in the floor. This is so crazy, Patrick says in an interview. Those two boards in the mood room, why didn't anyone rip them up? There's a weird romance in the anticipation of that. Is it filled with jewels? Is it a body? Is it money? You only get that once. I like the anticipating. We knew the hatch existed, but it's an unfinished mudroom, he said. It's just crawl space access. We never really thought about it. Previous owners said that's just how you get to the abandoned well. Nick and Patrick pried a few boards back and found four more packages, but decided to leave them where they were. We have a legend here that is real, Patrick explains. When do you get those? And that's one reason why we haven't taken the rest of the bundles up yet from under the mudroom. But there may have been a reason for the well that the couple hadn't anticipated. So I crawled in the hatch and got this photo of the abandoned well under the floor. It's beneath some of the secret booze compartments, Nick wrote on an Instagram post. Soon, the comments and speculation were flooding in. One user wrote, bootleggers probably had to whack a guy now and then, it'd be a good spot to hide him. In total, the couple found 66 bottles of old smuggler whiskey. A good number of the bottles dated back to 1923, lending credence to the theory that they were stashed during the Prohibition era in New York. The story of the couple's find spread quickly on social media, and soon auction houses and collectors were knocking on the door. But Nick and Patrick only had one thing on their minds, the mysterious man and bootlegger, Adolf Humpfner. What else could possibly be stashed in their home? The couple began cataloging the whiskey, informing the proper authorities, and sharing their discovery on Facebook. Nick shared, out of the first bottles we found, about 13 are still full, but four have tops that are a bit damaged, so we probably have around nine good bottles. So what do they plan to do with them? They intend to sell the full bottles, estimating each one could fetch about $1,000. As for the empty bottles, they won't be discarded. They'll be used as part of the decor in their home, now called Bootlegger Bungalow, paying homage to its history. Nick and Patrick also plan to keep one bottle to taste themselves. Their social media followers were eager for updates, urging them to share how the whiskey tastes. The couple responded on Facebook to everyone asking if we tried it, we haven't. But we will, a response that delighted their growing fan base. Nick added, it's a mystery and everyone wants to help solve it. People are sending us all sorts of fascinating information. Rumors link Adolf Humpfner, the man connected to the house, to mob activity in the 1930s, a suspicious death, and a missing bride. The couple remains dedicated to unraveling the hidden history of their home and the enigmatic man who built it, discovering new clues every day as they piece together the story.